Genshin Impact is going into its third year of live content, meaning there's a lot, and I mean a lot, of content in what is supposed to be a small mobile game. It can be overwhelming for new players, but not every quest is available if you went out and started playing Genshin today. There's a category known as temporary events, or flagship events according to the wiki. They can have their own quests and dubbed dialogue. Some characters even had their first meetings in these events, like Razor and Bennett during Windbloom, while others have had their backstories locked behind temporary events. <laughs> I'll <beta. laughs> This means that new players playing through just the story quests might miss a few things, so I figured I'd make a series going through the viewing order and summarize the temporary events as they show up. I won't be going through the main story plot beat by plot beat because you can still play through that yourselves. This is more to give summaries of previous temporary events in context of when they happened in the timeline based on when they were released. The Traveler has been in Tibet for three years now and man has a lot happened. It all starts with launch day. The prologue along with chapter 1, act 1, and act 2 were available at launch of 1.0, along with some character quests we'll get into. All content in this section is still available as you're introduced into the world of Tavat. You wake up as the traveler and quickly befriend the floating fairy named Paimon. You gain the power of Animo and enter your first nation of Mondstadt. As I said, I won't be summarizing the main stuff as you can still play, and I proceed to summarize it anyway. You learn a dragon is attacking Mondstadt and befriend the local government promising to stop the dragon. You fight through the first four domains, unlocking Amber, Kaya, and Lisa as you go. After this, Amber, Kaya, Lisa, and Zingling's character quests are unlocked, meaning they happen during the prologue. But Zingling's story quests can be finished afterwards as it doesn't affect the main story of Mondstadt. With these character quests completed, Act 1 of the prologue is finished. Act 2 and 3 go one right after the other, so no character quests fit between them. Traveler teams up with Venti, Diluc, and Jean and together they purify the dragon without killing it, saving Devalin. You return the now broken Holy Liar to Barbara, gaining a complimentary Barbara in the process. La Senora of the Harbingers arrives and steals Venti's Gnosis, ending the prologue of Genshin Impact. Of course, that's not all we get in the 1.0 update. After the prologue ends, Venti tells you to go to Liyue to witness the Rite of Part I mean the Rite of Ascension, and meet the Geo Archon. Most players at this point are not high enough level to unlock Chapter 1, Act 1 right away, so MiHoYo gave us some character quests to speed up the XP grind. The first one available after the prologue is Deluxe, where you become Robin to his Batman, and Razors, where you unlock the other weekly boss and meet a good boy. With the next few quests unlocking after the previous one is completed, making a pretty stable timeline. Cleese is unlocked after finishing Razors, because Razor mentions a little Bernie girl, who who apparently wasn't Amber, and Jean, Venti, and Mona's are unlocked after Cleese, since Jean and Mona's mention Clee. Makes sense to have Venti's first of these three because it's completely unrelated to the others. Then throw Jean her day off party, and then do Mona's as it happens between Liyue and Mondstadt. Unfortunately, the adventure rank level makes these and the Liyue character quests a little funky, but I'll get to that in Liyue. With those quests done, you have plenty of XP to start Chapter 1, Act 1, and Act 2. You arrive in Liyue to witness the Rite of Ascension, only to watch Rexlap is get murdered! Oh no! Fleeing the scene, you meet Child, and then Zhong Li. The rest of Act 1 and 2 is you following Zhong Li around as he plans his own funeral, because no one else is doing it, damn it! They all focused on these silly things, like trying to find the murderer or whatever, when really they should be focusing on me and my sick funeral. Of course, there is also one more character quest to do during Act 1 and 2, Sing Cho's. This is where the AR level makes things a little weird. You need to be AR 26 to start Sing Cho's quest in Liyue. To start Razor's quest back in Mondstadt, you only need to be AR 26. But for Cleese, you need to be AR-32, meaning that Sing Cho's happens between Razors and Cleese. So you would be going from Mondstadt to Liyue, back to Mondstadt. You don't need to travel all that. And Mona's ends you at AR-38, with the 1.1 update, with Chapter 1 Act 3 only requiring AR-28. But it hadn't come out yet, meaning new players won't be able to play through the Mondstadt character quests until after Act 3, which is just way too long. Another Genshin Impact summarized series does this, following the quest AR levels instead of the release order, I'll include a link in the description. The video is really well made, so I recommend checking it out, as it does go in-depth in summarizing each quest. But I just can't see Albedo and Rosaria's introduction in Dragonspine happening before Diluc's character quest of all things. It just 
doesn't make sense to me. This is just a long rant explaining why I'm not using AR level to determine timeline order. To me, the Mondstadt character quests happen before you leave for Leoe, because Chapter 1 Act 2 ends on a cliffhanger with Act 3 starting immediately after Act 2. It just doesn't make sense for Ganyu to say, go talk to Ningguan for Traveler to turn around and walk all the way back to Mondstadt for treasure hunting with Klee. So the Mondstadt character quest happening before you even leave for Liyue makes the most sense in the timeline. Even if back in the day some of us reached Ganyu a week into launch and had to wander around for a few weeks until the 1.1 update came out. To summarize, with this series I'm hoping to give a cohesive timeline for the story itself. Is this the canon timeline according to Mihoyo? No, I haven't asked them if I'm right or anything, but this is the correct order of when things were released by the creators. I'm just pulling information from multiple different quest pages on the wiki and putting it all in one line including things not available to new players. But with that, we're done with the 1.0 update! Next up will be 1.1 and the start of actual temporary events, so subscribe and ring that bell to know when the next video goes live!